Welcome to another edition of Question and Answer with a Criminal Defense Attorney. I am Mark Solomon, a defense attorney in Denver, Colorado, and today's question is about possession of a weapon by a previous offender or POWPO. But before we get to that, don't forget to click like. If you're enjoying this video, subscribe uh, with a little bell next to it to be notified of future videos. Possession of a weapon by a previous offender or commonly known as POWPO. That's where you've been convicted of a felony, either as an adult or if a juvenile, um, you've been convicted of something that would be a felony and you're in possession of a firearm. Let's take a look at that statute. So, this is basically it. A person commits the crime, if you're knowingly in possession of a firearm, then um, you have to have been previously convicted of a felony, and I'm going to get to the juvenile part of that in just a second, but um, that is a class 5 felony. Under some limited circumstances, it could be a class 6 felony, but I've never seen that, and I've done a whole lot of POWPO cases, and they are all class 5 felonies. So, um, Let's see here. So the juvenile part is section three. So section one was talking about um, an adult conviction for a felony or attempt to commit a felony. Section three talks about the exact same thing, except um, instead of uh, possession of a weapon having been previously convicted of a felony, it's possession of a weapon having previously um, been adjudicated for an act which, if committed by an adult, would have been a felony. It's the difference between um, normal criminal law and juvenile law, where there are no actual convictions, just adjudications. Um, so, that's the section, section 5, which talks about a second or subsequent conviction, which just means if you have a conviction for POWPO already and you're being um, charged with it again, instead of the normal 1 to 3 range, 1 to 3 years of prison, um, a class 4 felony um, can be at its presumptive range. In other words, generally what people look at is 2 to 6 years of prison. So... You don't want to commit this crime, and if you've committed it, you don't want to be convicted. Again, there are some things that I'm going to talk about in just a minute which um, make a second conviction even worse. Um, but let's look at that. Let's look at that in a short version, which is, you know, knowing possession of a firearm, usually a class five, but it can be a four on a class four on a, on a fourth or more. Let's talk a little bit about um, what they have to prove. And this, this is um, important. There's some case law that I've read, um, and it's come up in cases that I've done before. They have to prove you're in knowing possession of the firearm, meaning that you're aware of the circumstance that you're with a firearm, that you actually have it. They do not have to prove that you know you were convicted of a felony. What they, what they have to prove is that you were convicted of a felony or adjudicated um, as something that would have been a felony if you were a juvenile. They do not have to prove that you knew you were convicted of a felony. A lot of people are under the misconception that a felony comes off your record after so much time goes by. Some people think seven years, other people have said 11. A lot of this comes up a lot. Um, credit reporting is different than a criminal record. A felony conviction is a felony conviction forever and it stays with you for the rest of of your life, um, at least in Colorado. Um, so in other words, um, if you've been convicted of a felony 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago or more, um, and you think that it doesn't count, you're wrong, it counts, they can charge you with the possession of a firearm. Let me just take a brief aside and talk about what is possession. Um, in the same context, when we talk about possession of illegal drugs, possession of a firearm is literally um, knowing of its existence and having had that possession long enough to be able to have dispossessed or have gotten rid of it. So in other words, if somebody tosses you a gun and you immediately throw it on the floor, you're not in possession of it. But I've done cases where there's been a firearm under the seat um, that the defendant was sitting in and they were charged with it. I've done possession of firearm cases where the firearm was in the console of the car. There are a lot of factors that go into whether or not um, you could be convicted of it, but, but 
if the police officer searches you, your car, what's around you for whatever reason, you will be charged with it. And what we'd be looking into is whether that search was legal or not, and whether all of the circumstances around that possession could constitute knowing possession um, in front of a jury. Uh, because it is a felony, you get a jury of 12 people, you have to convince, or they have to convince 12 people that you were knowingly in possession of that firearm. So the things that they look at is, you know, whose car it is, where in the car it was, um, how many people were in the car, how many guns they found, that sort of thing. Okay. So that is um, uh, possession of a firearm by a previous offender. I am not talking about the federal statute, um, but there is a federal statute that also prohibits people from um, having possession of a gun. That's um, a, a different video. Um, I hope to get that out in the next day or two, possibly next week. But um, that's Title 18 USC for U.S. Code 921 and 922. Um, but that's a subject for another video. So that is the question and answer for today. If you would like your own question submitted, you can always put it in the comments, um, tag me on Twitter, or um, email it to me. You've got the email address right here. And as always, you have a right to remain silent. If a police officer asks you questions about what you have, what you know, where you've been, or anything, you have a right to say, I do not want to talk to you. And if they persist, I want a lawyer.